Today on The Breakfast, 14 of uh, the 18 registered political parties in Nigeria have threatened to withdraw their participation from the election forthcoming general elections if the Nigerian federal government and the Central Bank of Nigeria cancel or suspend the ongoing cash withdrawal limits and the Naira redesign policy. We'll look at the implications of this for the election. Also on The Breakfast, report says one in four Nigerian women and girls have been caught. How can we partner with women, men and boys and policymakers to end female genital mutilation? As usual, we'll take a look at uh, what the papers are saying this morning in Off the Press. Good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Starting a bit there, my name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Abopo. We don't look like what we've been going through, Kofi. Really? I just wanted to say that, like, you know, the whole drama that's going on, mm. uh, you know, trying to move around, getting petrol to power your house, mm -hmm. uh, because there's no power supply. Anyways, you live in a different mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. environment where there's constant power no, supply. No, I, 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 I live in a heavenly economy. <laughs> Let's yes, move economy. Uh, before we, we, we get into the main you know, training stories, we will not be doing justice if we don't. Just keep spread thought for what's happened in Turkey. I'm sure you, know, you saw the videos and images of the, the Turkish earthquake um, that uh, we hear several persons, have, their lives have been lost, several bu buildings collapsing and all that mess. It's really sad. You know, where they're still looking for the survivors, but what is compounding uh, the 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 search and rescue effort right now is that Turkey is in the middle of winter, you know, so it's snowing over there and it's uh, really really cold. And the part of Turkey where this occurred is a uh, is really cold, you know, it's really cold. So that's uh, uh, a sad one. I mean, uh, yesterday also a uh, Ghanaian footballer Christian Atu, you know, also was was training because he said they said he was missing, uh, and he was part of. Uh, a football team in uh, Hatay Spor in Turkey, and they were in a building when this uh, a nine-story building, or uh, sorry, a high-rise building, when this thing occurred. He was on the ninth floor. A lot of his teammates and some of his teammates, and I think the football teams, uh, football clubs man, uh, uh, manager or something like that. I think assistant CEO is also missing as well. It's really sad. No, it's really I, sad. I think eventually for him, he was found alive. The, the, and the, 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 the report of him being found, because uh, I tweeted that late last night. Uh, Ghanaian uh, journalist by name Sadiq Adams put that out. But a report of him being found, actually, people have to draw my attention for that it's not been confirmed. You know, uh, I haven't checked for the latest, but this was as at maybe 2 a.m. You know, it, but, it but, but you know how you know how people you know how um, that's a, a crisis, a mm. crisis situation. I mean, it's very intense. It's yeah. also possible that people are carried away by all this going on, and the updates might just almost be impossible. But mm. fingers crossed. We definitely are praying for them. We, we, we were praying. That, I mean, you, you, we never, you never can tell. You will never understand what it is to experience a natural disaster. And that's exactly where we are. We're at a point where we don't even experience that. So we probably might not be able to relate. In local or street words would be, I can't relate. Because I don't know what that means. It's, it's, it's right. sad. You know, but, some, some, yeah, sorry. Go on. Yeah, so um, it's very saddening. And our hearts and prayers with those who have uh, who are going through this so we're definitely praying that you know everyone comes out alive but that's not going to be yes the case. so far according to cnn last result i saw about four thousand three hundred people have lost their lives and uh, it's really really unfortunate um the ghanaian footballer is there uh, there were three ghanaian female footballers who were also said to be missing but they've been found um to play for i think hata espo the the female uh, football team of Hatayas for one place for Fenerbahce, the female team of Fenerbahce. So um, for a lot of people who know this footballer, he played in the Premier League, Christian Atu, for, um, for, for Chelsea. He was bought by Chelsea after playing for the underage um, uh, team in Ghana. And uh, Chelsea put out a tweet saying that they're praying for him. Including he, he, Newcastle. He also played for Newcastle United as well. And they put out a tweet saying that... Uh, they're wishing him, uh, you know, that he'll be found and all that. So it, it, it's sad. But let's move on to the current one that we want to talk about here. 
uh, which is about Nigerian musician uh, Thames, who uh, has won a Grammy. Um, yesterday I saw Shade Adu tra trending, and I wondered what is Shade Adu trending for, only to see that um, people were saying that Shade, uh, the last time a Nigerian female won a Grammy award, it was Shade. We need to check that, you know, but that's what some were saying. But um, uh, Thames goes by the name, uh, she goes by the name Thames, but she is uh, officially called her government name is uh, Tamilade Okbeni, um, and uh, she backed another international award. This is not the first time she's winning an international award at the Grammy. Um, it was held at the uh, Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles, uh, and you had the most um, uh, respected and revered musical artists in the world in attendance. Um, she won her, her Grammy Award for a part in Future's hit single, Wait For You. All right. Last year, I think we were, we were thinking that she win a Grammy or Whiskey to win a Grammy for that, that song, you know, that's been trending all over, that, that time song with, with Whiskey. And Essence. I think just Essence, Justin Bieber. I love that song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it, didn't, it didn't work out for Whiskey. And, uh, and I think uh, t uh, Thames is second time lucky because she was featured with Future. And that's big, a big name. That's Future a very and Drake. Big, yeah, and she won that wait for you. Okay, Future and Drake. Mm -hmm. uh, you know your hip-hop. You know your <laughs> hip-hop. I've been to doubt today. So this uh, the category under which they won that award is um, Best Melodic Rap Performance. Um, so she's also, apart from being the second Nigerian female uh, to win a, a Grammy, she is the first uh, non-mixed Nigerian, according I to like what they're saying, I like what they're calling they're calling that first non. I don't think we should we should you know have a disparity between. So you so you know a couple but, but she's said to be the first non-mixed Nigerian and female musician to win a Grammy. Shade Adu won a Grammy in 1986, and um, uh, yeah, before I forget, Cynthia uh, Erivo uh, uh, backed uh, best theater album in 2017. Uh, Cynthia Rivo is a British Nigerian. Um, a lot of people don't know about Cynthia Rivo. In 2017, that's about uh, just about uh, seven years ago uh, or six years ago. Okay, so congratulations to to to, to Thames. I, I think that that's the right word. I mean, that's the the thing to say. Congratulations, Oha. It's, it's great. It's it's uh, fantastic, and we are you know proud of it. Whatever. I mean, this is for the culture. This is for Nigeria. I this like is the for way you say it. This is for the culture. <laughs> this is for the culture, yeah. This is for Nigeria. Right. This is for Africa. And we are super excited about it. Now, I also know that there are conversations around not being a single, you know, win. It's a collaborative effort. That's a win because you have mm. a future, you have Drake on that. Not like Does she the have the, the, the Grammy Award? We can't say, but I don't think that that's the case because so I don't, I don't, I don't think that uh, you know. Okay, why are you making me feel like this? Because she she, she received a, a, an award. She's going to get one, right? No, she's so going. To, she's she got one. Did she get one? Yes, yes, she, yes. She she did. Okay, yes. that's fine. So, but 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 you it'll know, it'll be in a house. It will no, be no, on no. record. So, so her name is on it. No, so this this is what we have to say. We're not trying to. I mean, this is me not trying to be um, naughty here. You know. But we, we have to state it the way it is. Like I said, it's a win for the culture. It's a win for Africa. It's a win for the women. It's Which a culture win. are you for? Because let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 so let's bear in mind that listen. Uh, we also don't understand well, all, allow, that, allow all that uh, uh, um, right? hip-hop jargon. What no, culture no. are you talking so about? Uh, I don't know if you've listened <laughs> to this song. Wait, have you even listened to it? You, need, you mm. need to see that she did great. I mean, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Thames, we, we know the song. Thames has, you know, she's, she's gifted and she... She's got these very powerful vocals, if you like to put. Uh, her vocals really, you know, way, like very, very outstanding. And we, we really have to give it to her. But that's what it is. The argument whether Shadia Adu, you know, was the first musician, but I like how you put it. And it, it should be known that, yes, Shadia Adu, uh, they, they said that she's the first musician of Nigerian origin. She's of Nigerian origin, right? But of course, she's British. She won that Grammy me. in 1986. Uh, 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 but you can't take it out. I mean, no, 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 the no, fact no. that she... You see, we, we can't, you can't oh, pick okay. and choose. Mercy, sorry to interrupt. You can't pick and choose. You know, uh, I'll take this one out. If you take something, eh, you have to take it in, in its entirety. I, I'm, I'm just putting out what you know. people are saying. You know, no, no, I'm not, not you, in... not you. I'm not, I'm not referring to you. I'm talking about them, they now. And you've raised a very important point, which is true. You know, people are saying, oh, okay, Shadi. But when Shadi wins, we say, oh, Nigerian, right? And we celebrate her as our own. And when people say, um, 
said. You said, no, it's not said, it's Shade. So if, if that's the case, then we should take, leave it at that. That, that's, that's exactly you know that's a, that's exactly why you know all of this has to be put out because it's a conversation i'm sure that a lot of persons have not been able to this information might be new to too many persons right here right so i'm not sure too many persons know that there was a certain shadi who is of a nigerian origin but of course she's british and she won this award the first grammy she won in 1986 that's a long time. I, 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 I'm, sorry for, was, I'm sorry for those who don't know. It's not Shade's fault. But I mean, as a kid, I knew about Sweetest Star. If you don't know, you don't know. No, no, no. Yeah, but, but, you know but, Sabi, you know so, Sabi. Don't be a uh, fault, say you know Sabi. So no one is saying... You know, saying we, we, knew, we knew about Sweetest Tabu as kids growing up. I'm sure you know about Sweetest Tabu as a... So, so the point you know is, is, it's not that, you know, uh, you begin to blame people that they don't know or dead you know. But the point is, if you don't know already... Which I think that a lot of persons are on this table, not knowing that once upon a time, we had someone who won the Grammys in 1986. And it was not her first Grammy. She's had a couple of them. I mean, she's an amazing singer. Uh, but you want to put it at the fact that, of course, she's a British singer with a Nigerian origin. I mean, she's, she's Nigerian and what have you. However you want to look at it, it's, it's a win-win for Nigeria. Okay? Shade. Thames, any other person, like I would say, it's it's blessed for the culture, it's blessed for Africa, it's also, but there's also one thing that has also been of a conversation around the social media space and off the social media space is, hey, should we skip, be part of this conversation? Don't forget, it should be emphasized, capital letter, very bold, that Thames rose to prominence after the future, you know, when we skip futured her, you know, in that song, Essence. And um, unfortunately, just like Last Last, everyone expected that Last Last or Burner Boy was going to take it, right? Also, everyone also expected that uh, Essence was going to take it at that time. And I know a lot of persons who tweeted that uh, Whiskey was robbed. Uh, I, the likes of uh, Naomi Campbell tweeted that. A lot of persons, I mean, you could look at it, if you look at Essence, it was, it was a global music. It was, it, was, it was that sound that was accepted. So, but however, we're, we're very um, appreciative and we're saying that Nigeria is making us proud. Yes, I mean, I, I, mean sense. I, 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 I don't think for me, you know, I, I, I feel that the debate about whether Shade was the first Nigerian female or not, um, uh, I, I, how does she identify herself? British, British Nigerian? We need, to, we need to find out. But I think for, for Nigerians, the fact that, you know, this country identified with Shade and called Shade uh, their own it means that uh, they should leave it at that. You know, I mean, if 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 Thames had not won anything, it would still be saying Shade. So uh, we have a female who has won. So I, I don't think that that so, would. So I, I, I don't think that that would have let's, been the Let's leave it at that. And um, no, no. So uh, and, I, I, and, I don't and, think and that, that would have been the I think if we can say that uh, you know Thames is the first non-mixed Nigerian, that's fine. You know, but like but, but, I, but like I said, but, but Sinka Emery won uh, a Grammy. Uh, uh, after in 2017, that's another person to look at. But um, as to whether um, uh, Shade was the first Nigerian or you know half Nigerian mix, and whatever you want to call it, or some some of Nigerian origin to win, and that's not the case because uh, King Sonia they won at the Grammy in 1984. No, we're not talking about um, males now, Kofi. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, so the conversation okay, is no, about no, the I, females. I, I, I'm just saying that. Uh, listen, Messi, please. I'm just saying that uh, first ever. Okay, and for those who are saying first ever. Will they're, be, they are will saying be first King, ever King female. They're not Day saying first ever male. In, I know. I'm just saying first ever is first ever. You know, just listen to me. What I mean is first ever. Uh, in 1984, he just, I'm just saying that he won it in 1984. Nothing, nothing, nothing uh, serious about that. I, I, and if you we know. even want to talk about the so Grammys. So a list, list of Nigerians who've won uh, Grammys in the past. I just go over some of the names. And it's quite a, a long list. I think Nigerians need to be, uh, need to be proud about uh, it. Um, so these are Grammy nominations we're talking about here, not, not awards, nominations. King Sonadi had a nomination in 1984, uh, um, and of course, he didn't win. Uh, Baba Tunde Olatunji won a, had a Grammy nomination in 1998, he didn't win. King Sonadi got another nomination in 1999. Uh, uh, Femi Kuti got a nomination in 2003. Femi Kuti got another nomination in 2010. He got a nomination in 2012, uh, another one in 2014, 
Shell Kuti and Egypt 80 got nomination in 2019. Uh, Burner Boy got nomination in 2020. And then in 2021, finally, he won. Uh, in 2021, that's uh, twice as tall. And then we have um, Whiskey having a nomination in 2021. Femi Kuti and Made Kuti 2022. Whiskey featuring Thames. That's song you talked about, Mercy, in 2022. Femi Kuti still had another one in 2022. And then you had... Uh, uh, Brenner Boy in 2023. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that from uh, from this, this is an official list on Wikipedia. So it's accessible to anyone. It seems that they are not uh, including Shade and Cynthia on this list. So, you know, so, um, so <laughs> it is interesting. But um, uh, what I'm saying is that if we we claim people, let's just take it out like that. Uh, so I think it's very important that we put out. I, I don't think we should dwell on this. We probably have to move on. But it's also important to you know, put out the statistics and put out the facts, the argument that people are having. Uh, those who are saying, oh, Shade is not, I mean, it's not like a Nigerian, pure Nigerian. It's a mixed breed, so she's Nigerian. She's British, and she's been claiming that she's Nigerian. But like I say, I mean, it's a win for the culture. Whether half, whether full, whether, however you want to look at it, one quarter, the fact that you have a Nigerian winning is a win for all, it's a win for the culture, and we're super proud. Thames, congratulations. So I probably might not just be a single-handed win, just like Bonner Boy, but it's a win. A win is a win, and we're really proud. And we cannot also ignore the fact that, hey, um, Essence was one of the collaborations that brought, you know, Thames. Probably she's been on, but you just need that, just one kick. You just need one collaboration. You just need one phone call. That's exactly what happened. And we're saying, hey, if Whiskey didn't do all of that, I mean, probably, the problem wouldn't be here. So, yes. A uh, big shout out to Whiskey, by the way. So uh, quickly, let's move on to another of our top trending. Nigeria and the Republic of Niger have signed a bilateral, a bilateral agreement in Abuja for a coordination of frequency utilization along their borders to ensure seamless deployment of services around and within two countries, Niger Republic and Nigeria. The agreement signing ceremony was one of the highlights uh, of a two-day digital economy regional conference that was hosted by Nigerian government, and it was facilitated by the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. And you should know that when you talk about that, this Issa Pantami would be part of it. Now, just Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, uh, signed on behalf of Nigeria, while his Nigerian counterpart, uh, you know, the Minister of Post and New Information Technologies, Musa Barzer, signed on behalf of this country. And, uh, you know, you, you want to begin to understand what this means. I mean, that's uh, the conversation Nigerians have been having. The Executive Vice Chairman talk about the witnesses and the ex uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Communication Commission, Professor Omar Danbata and Nigeria Republic's Chairman of the National Council for Regulation of Electronic Communications and Posts were witnesses to the agreement, which applied to the coordination of frequencies existing in Nigeria and Nigeria Republic, uh, transboundary areas between 87.5 megahertz uh, to 30 gigahertz, uh, that's what it is. Now, uh, I, we understand that there's so much, I mean, Nigerians will say, about this collaboration. When you look at the Nigerian government and our relationship with Nigeria Republic, so it feels like we always are suspicious of every move of the government. Well, uh, uh, Messi, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting development and I really have nothing to add to that. Um, I think that uh, it is what it is, you know. We will keep watching this space, as we always say. Um, but uh, I, we'll go quickly, because of time, go to the last uh, uh, last trending story, which has to do with the Yoruba Nation agitation. And um, what we hear is that the police have arrested 10 Yoruba Nation agitators. Uh, they also set their camp uh, uh, on a blaze and they, uh, for setting camp rather, to launch a massive protest. Uh, Yoruba Nation has been in the news uh, recently, especially with a, with a protest planned uh, in Ojota. Uh, I mean, people thought that, okay, it's, it, was, it was, had been nipped in the bud. Let me say, a bit dead because of the arrest of the leader of that group, uh, uh, Igboho, who has been in Kotonou, uh, Benue Republic, in, in detention for some time. Um, but these, these uh, members of the Yoruba Nation were setting up camp at Alausa, and they were planning to use that camp to launch a, a massive protest. You know, they had another one at Ojota, 
we, where the police intervened. Remember, we talked about it some time on this program. And uh, the suspicion was that some lives were lost after the police fired some, bu some bullets, but the police said they didn't fire bullets. And there was an altercation between uh, two groups at that place who mentioned their names. Uh, but yesterday, the police said they arrested um, 10 urban nation agitators in Alausa. Alausa is um, where the seat of government in, in, in Lagos is. You know, that's the seat of government. So you have government offices, uh, the governor's office, I believe, and um, a lot of uh, ministries, departments, and agencies are around that area. If you remember the, um, the NSAS protests as well, that was uh, uh, one of the bases where protests were held. So the spokesman for the Lagos State Police Command, uh, Benjamin Hunde, who tweets a lot, um, put out a, a tweet again on his handle at Benjamin Hunde uh, on Sunday, uh, two days ago, where he said the suspects were arrested when they started setting up camp uh, they plan to use as a base to launch a massive protest. And um, uh, he said in his tweet, quote, the camp was promptly dislodged while agitators were arrested and they're still continuing their investigation. He said, quote, this is words, lawlessness will not be tolerated. So that's that. Um, I'm sure that uh, if there's any further involvement, he will tell us. You can see some of the pictures of those uh, who were uh, arrested. You know, they're holding flags of, of Yoruba nation and all that. You know, <laughs> so, so is, is that, that's that. I mean, I don't know what you said. Well, this mercy, but... Uh, well, uh, well I, you probably might want to understand the concerns of the Nigerian pleas, uh, just like yesterday, making reference to the fact that protest is a tool that has been used over time in different countries by citizens of this country to demand change of policy. But uh, usually for climbers as people take advantage of the protests and begin to truncate the entire, I mean, it should be peaceful. When you become a threat to national security, uh, we can't explain all of that. You, you should go ahead and, and protest, but not, you know, being violent and whatever you. We'll just move away for the want of time. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs> 